couple cool things that going on this week. <laughs> I said that with a smile because it's been one of those weeks, man. I tell you what. Come on, you know, sometimes you, you go through things and you think you're over them. And then you realize, man, that just came right back up. You know what I mean? Wow. So we went through one of those weeks where it was pretty, pretty. Anyway, we got the victory. That's what matters, right? We got the victory. So yesterday I had this really cool thing. Um, I was at a bar mitzvah yesterday. Uh, very traditional uh, in the sense, not necessarily in the Bible, but, but traditional in the sense of the way it's been structured. And as I set, I set them through all the ritual, I went through this wave of emotions. I was talking to Kathy about it earlier, just this, this, oh, this is neat, and oh, this is sad, oh, this is neat, and oh, why? You know? I went through that whole just gamut of emotions, you know, and, and then just hurting, looking at the rabbi, and I believe it was his wife. It was, it was his wife. No, that was wasn't his wife. Okay, that, yeah, but either way, they, I mean, just precious people, you know, you just look at them and thought, God, they're so precious, you know, and, and I looked at them and thought, man, you know, they're so dedicated to what they believe. Yeah. You know, they, they bought it and they're in it and they had, you know, there's a revelation obviously that's missing. And I, 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 when I left it, I felt this is so incomplete. You know, this is just, I knew it was incomplete because I know the Messiah. I know who's already come. So I knew it was incomplete, but I just felt that, I felt that hurt in there because I realized you know, as much as with all the ceremony and ritual and the, we're so careful to bring out the Torah and yeah. open gates up, and it was such an event, and everybody, you know, and then they gave the young man who was getting the bar mitzvah the 613 laws of Moses <laughs> that he was going to have to carry now, you know, and yeah, I was like, well, all right, you know, but I was thankful to be there, and then while I was there, of course, this whole week has been a battle for me, and this whole week I've been... Uh, Measuring what I wanted to talk about today, I really, I don't really have a Mother's Day message, you know, like some churches would. So, and as I sat there, I got this, uh, I got a text. <clears throat> yeah, in the synagogue, I got a text. You know, so I was checking it out, and it was from our dear friend Sheila. <laughs> and Sheila said, "Hey, the Bellas are here, and uh, they'd like to come over. They might come tomorrow. Maybe they could share a little bit." And I was like, "Hey, they can just teach, you know." <laughs> And the reason why it was really significant, I'm going to have them come up here, is because this, these are Messianic Jews. This is the this is the continuation and the completion of what I saw yesterday. This is the this is the completion of that. This is past the rabbi. This is on in the in Jesus the Messiah. And, uh, and so, um, hold on, Papa's upset. That's okay. That's no, okay. Come on down, Papa. Good. It's home church, so we don't, we don't get tied up with all that stuff. Uh, anyway, so I knew that it was the Lord. I knew the Holy Spirit was showing me something because I was going through that whole range there, watching that event yesterday. Very, you know, very, I don't know. Yeah, sit down, get up, sit down. I was like, yeah, I'm back in Catholic church, you know what I'm saying? You know, but it was, that's the way they know to do it. That's the way they believe. And I saw the scales there, and I realized that they believed that what they were doing was correct. And, um, and so I at least honored the fact that they were faithful to what they believed. Mm -hmm. they, they really were uh, faithful to that. And just pray that the Lord begins to reveal, you know. Yeah. You know, Jesus hurt very much for the for the fact that Israel missed its uh, yes. the day of visitation. Yes. You know, it was a very hurtful thing for the Lord. And uh, I can sense that when I was in there, that as much as they talked about the Ruach, the, the Spirit yeah. of God, and yeah. the Spirit of God was not moving in there. Yeah. It was yeah. dry and stale, you know, so they talked about it, but it was just a, something from the past almost, you know, so, anyway, I don't want to hear and, and continue on, but further ado, I'm going to invite some wonderful family up here who I have met before, come on up guys, and Ellis, and I can leave this here, this is uh, Una and Leonardo, you want to leave this here, move this, I can move this, with four or five, we'll hide behind, yeah, 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 <laughs> all right, good, well, I didn't think you did, but I'm going to put number just in case, and uh, here we go, all right, all right. Mind if we sit? No. no, not at all. Do you want to get a couple of comfortable chairs? Or you want to I know this way, we won't go too long. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah, plenty of cushion for those. <laughs> So Una's going to open us up in a prayer in Hebrew, and I'll continue in English. <laughs> 
מבפנים החוץ, זה לא מבחוץ פנימה, אלא מבפנים החוץ, שניגע בתפארת שלך הערב, לא ערב יום. אני מבקשת אבא שבבית הכנסת של אתמול, בבר מצווה אבא, שהרוח שלך תיכנס בכל איש ואיש, שהאמת יצא החוצה, ושגם שם יהיה ניסים. תודה לך על מה שאתה מתכנן לעשות פה היום. אני מבקשת אבא שיהיה לנו אוזן להקשיב, לב להביע, ומדהים להודיע את מה שיש לך לומר. בשם ישום ש... Uh, Lord, just thank you, Father God. This is a beautiful opportunity for us to honor you and to worship you and all that we do, Father. And I don't know uh, how to express this, but I know that in this room is a cumulative uh, experience of you, which is just magnificent. And I just hope that all of, all of those moments, add, all added together, will equal something brand new here today, Lord God, that all of us who have testimonies your glory and power and faithfulness and, and everlasting love, Father God, that somehow we won't leave here unchanged. In Yeshua's name. So, our son made a request before we go down any various beautiful winding that son, Luigi. His request was that we would give a 30 second explanation of the mission before we go into anything else. Because we are sent on a mission is five years into it and sometimes you have to listen for like 40 minutes and then you finally say oh i get it that they do that so what we do is not who we are and what we do is only a small portion of how it all adds up but simply put in using traditional language for missionaries our chosen word is emissary it's represent representatives of yeshua to uh his brothers and sisters in Israel, to the, un to the unsaved uh, Jewish population in Israel. And we are evangelists, and that when we're there, which is about almost half of every year, the only reason we're there is to bring to life Yeshua to the people who've never considered him, and if they did, it was only as an enemy. So that's a tall, tall order. It's uh, seeming to be mission impossible, so... Uh, a special ingredient was added to that, and it's the most obvious one, it's prayer. But it's focused prayer. So if everyone in this room, we have a team we've assembled over five years, it's 3,500 people. They have pictures and dossiers or, or introductions on each one of about 140 people that we are sharing with in Israel, unsaved people. Then while we're in the land, then we get to meet with this one or this one or this one or that one that they've already kind of been introduced to and been praying for, we write a very detailed report, only to the team, not a newsletter, but a, a field report, describing the conversations, where the break, breakthroughs were, where the strongholds are, as to say we went behind the lines. They're, they're not the enemy, but the enemy is very active in there. And we had reconnaissance, we had details. This is where the strongholds still are. This is where the air support, or prayer support in this case, has to come in. And I know it sounds kind of, Basic, but it's incredibly basic, and we didn't think of it. We were birthed out of a conversation five years ago, and that's probably more than 30 seconds. But do you, anyone not understand what I just said? Okay, we share the good news, and we have thousands of people praying for the people we're witnessing to, and for the whole nation. But they're, they're getting their traction and their <coughs> true heart and kind of devotion by actually having real human beings and not just a nameless, faceless idea of Israel, but actual people. And then they're able to pray for the whole nation because, you know, if I named 20 strongholds, you'd say, wow, exactly, yeah, matter of fact, my cousin, my brother, my, they've got all these same issues. Wow, prayer. So we tell people, just to put a, this into a much more practical package, besides the fact that we'd like you to consider joining this prayer team, which is called the Israel Prayer Mission, you know, if you were going off to see your favorite aunt or someone who lived across the state or across the country, and you had three or four friends you knew really prayed believing prayers. Like they believe, you know, I'm going to put it this way yesterday, some people pray uh, for rain and bring an umbrella. And some people <laughs> pray for rain and they don't bring an umbrella. Okay, the first group are believing believers. They actually believe that prayer moves mountains. That's what, that was what Jesus said, you know, you, your prayers are not being answered because you just don't have the faith. If you had even the faith of a mustard seed, and you could say to this mountain, move, and it would move. So I think it's a tiny majority of people that actually pray, believe in prayers. Everyone else has a plan B and a C and a B. And yeah. 
I'll let you off the hook, God. I know. Yes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and praying God's will. And all of that has to be a part of, of this. But we know that salvation is a part of God's will. Yeah. Someone told us something yesterday. We went out uh, after we shared somewhere to some friends, and he said something that literally changed me. Because you know, you hear this term, the elect, right? And I, I'm not into theology, and I'm not going to discuss <coughs> theology here. But I think everyone has a picture. I had a picture that that means some people are called, and that they'll eventually respond. And we don't know who those people are, so we just assume that's everyone. But he said, no. Every, God wants everybody. You, everybody's yes. name is on the that's list. Right. Yeah. You have to go in and that's scratch right. it off. Yes. And that, look, Amen. Uh, you Amen. actively have to scratch your name yes. off the list. Because yes. yes. God wishes them would perish. Right? Yes. I think the people of Israel, because we were brought up in a Zionist country, so it's not based on faith, it's not based on um, Zionism. It's not based on waiting for the Messiah. It's based on survival mode. Mm -hmm. We are hated all as Jews hated all over the world. This is the only safe zone for us. This is a place if another Holocaust come about, we have a home, we have a country, we are safe. Right. So being brought up in a country that not considering God it's not a God move. Yeah. It's a man move. Yeah. We're gonna take life into our hands. And we're going to make it happen. This is the kind of thing we are brought up in. So naturally, a child is being born already crossed off that list by his parents. Yeah. So the upbringing of being chosen or not. Our yeah. parents already chose for me to raise me up in a house yeah. that I'm off the list of God because there's no God. Because if there was God, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need to be on this country because there would be no Holocaust. So there's this equation that really it's not God's equation, it's men's, God's ways are so much higher than, than ours, but as far as they can go, am I running too fast? No, no, I just wanted to qualify, <laughs> not all Jews are religious in Israel. Right. So if you're, I don't want to, I just wanted to add that. Some homes are very secular. Mm -hmm. uh, we both came out of secular homes, so thus, It's pretty be, much yeah. 70, I think, don't hold me for the numbers, but majority are secular smaller group of religious and those religious is like what you've seen in the synagogue and beyond they're so religious that the secular have no relationship it's like a line in the sand us and them so we're talking about us that those who don't have god in their horizon my father said we had an incredible miracle and i called my father said it was a miracle it was a miracle that's in israel and he goes yeah it was a miracle it was a miracle but, oh my gosh you've been vicious you've been cynical and he said of course i'm being cynical I said, why? I said, because in my picture, there's no place for God. My picture is complete. My picture is beautiful. And even if I wanted to put God in my picture, there's no place for Him. Thought bubble. That's a real person. <coughs> that is an incredible point of prayer. Yeah. His name yeah. is Durant. So he literally could go home. Everyone says, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that Durant, that you would make space where there's no space. This, even this little crack, you know, yeah. where water can get in, water can get out, a tiny crack, or a hole in the sky, you know, some kind of a direct thing. Now, we'll share some testimonies where that happens. So let's go back to the own. When that happened, it's a year ago, we sent to the whole team. So this is what the one says. So what are you gonna do? Can you pray this lie out? Can you ask God to put an eraser and make a space for himself in the one's picture? And people went to war. They really, uh, we hope the majority on our team are believing believers who say, okay, let's pray reality to change. And they start praying a change in their one's understanding. And that lie, it's a serious lie, mm -hmm. has to be removed. If I go with the one for a coffee shop and I discuss this lie, I'm feeding the lie because yeah. he has to defend it. But prayers remove the lie. Yeah. And now fast forward a year later, about three, four weeks ago, my brother calls me and says, listen, when I we need to pray about something. And I said, are you being really cynical? And he goes, no, why? Now I have to remove the unbelief that sits on my mind. You have no idea how big this is. <laughs> and he says, why would I be cynical? We need to pray about something. I have to take miles ahead to catch up with him. And I go, what happened? Oh my gosh, they prayed. Yeah. They should pray for me that my understanding of the one is going to move forward to. <laughs> but we meet. And I say, what are we praying about? And he says, 
tell you what he was going to say, but I'll back up that two hours before he called, there was a lady who wanted to bless my parents in Israel with something so tangible. And I've been praying, what could she send them? What do they need? What do they need? She's waiting for my text. She said, what do they need? I want to bless them. I want to bless them. She's been praying for them for almost two years now. She wants to bless them. She wants her love through the prayers to become real. And I've been pacing upstairs. They were all sleeping. Lord, what do they need? What do they need? Well, I don't know what they need. My brother calls two hours later. He says, Una, listen, we have to pray. Okay. What are we praying about? It says, Ima Baba, our parents, need a new vacuum cleaner. We need to pray. They don't have money. <laughs> and I'm like, you need a vacuum cleaner, you don't have money, you still need a vacuum cleaner. And I said, Dawn, we don't need to pray. It's already been done. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, some prayers are so fast that it's just reality. Because two hours before, I've been pacing, saying, God, what do they need? This lady is waiting, and you are an answer for my prayer. It's done. And he goes, that simple? And I said, that simple. So, but look when he got to participate, he got to do the shopping on that side and send pictures to the gal back here. And they decided to go for the deluxe one, the one that you probably wouldn't buy for yourself. But anyway, it lasts a long time and really pick up the dirt. <laughs> but look, look, prayers. So there was a mess. So you can. Are we clear what we're doing? Yeah, good job. Yeah. It's not, okay. <laughs> it's a living, breathing, picture. It's a living, breathing organism. For once, you don't have to send the missionaries. You are a part of the mission. Yes, amen. Okay, and some people grab a hold of that. Of the 3,500, some of those are fiercely committed. We meet people that we've met four and five years ago. We used to give individual assignments. We don't do it anymore. We give everybody access to the whole 140. But it used to be, oh, I'd like you to pray for Aunt Mary. Here's a sheet. Here's her picture. Here's some information about her. She was born in Poland. She's from a you know, sort of communist background. And God, uh, the curse of hating God is in there. Beautiful person, wonderful this and that. And just a few things. You, I would start to get a sense of who Aunt Mary is, and you would adopt her. And uh, there's just, for us, we go back to cities where we spoke a few years ago, and we'll stay in someone's house. You know, we, we're professional guests. We're on the road about seven months out of the year with our five kids, and we sell them stay in hotels. And we'll get to this place, and they have the original pictures, like the kids, all each one took someone to pray for, and all over the house. And they've moved, like, from Memphis to, to Arizona, to New Mexico, and everywhere we look, they have these, they're tattered, but they're, like, still there, and you can tell. And they, when they speak the names of the people <coughs> they're praying for, they speak it with this kind of, uh, like, love, real love, birth God's love, birth in their hearts, in their prayer closets, and their prayer lives have, have grown. Because I don't know about you, but my experience has been most people, when they say, I'll pray for you, if they don't do it on the spot, they'll never do it. That's right. And if they do it, it's like between <laughs> then and the car they remember, yes. or maybe from then in the house, or maybe for a few days. Mm -hmm. Sustained prayer, you know, you meet these people, you read about them, they have a book, mm -hmm. and uh, when God says stop praying, they'll stop praying, but yeah. up until then. And, and I think God's like, he's, he's just auditing the situation. Saying, they don't, I have to know, he's thinking, they don't even believe I'm going to do this. Yeah. Uh, what happened to my reputation? Yeah. It used to be God. Yeah. Uh, and on the happy note. No, I said, well, that was yeah. a happy note. <laughs> no, <just> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he desired, he's jealous for our, our, our faith. But the happy note. Yes, the happy note. <laughs> <laughs> It's those who really pray and really believe in, really believe in that when we ask God, He doesn't go, well, she forgot to ask for new sunglasses. So I don't think so <laughs> Too late. No, He hears the prayer and says, that's a great inspiration. I'll do without what I want. So we have to remember that as we're praying, we're not giving God a shopping list. He sees our heart. Amen. And out of that, yes. He goes, two plus two is 60,000. Yes. That's right. That's it. That's it. So and I want to say it's very inclusive. There's nothing we're doing, A, that we thought of, B, that we understood would ever be our calling. We don't necessarily think of it that way. Um, you know, we just believe that everybody has been given the Great Commission. Mm -hmm.
And we believe that everybody has been given access to the Father through the work of the cross. And that everybody is called to pray, uh, to live a lifestyle of prayer. And we tell people when they say, oh, I'm too busy to pray, you don't know my life. They say, well, do you walk, do you shower, or do you drive a car? Yes. You know, you know, saying, you probably pray. Are children on that list? I mean, are, are children on that list? Yes, where, there are some. Uh, there, I mean, people that we're, we're sharing with? Well, that you're specifically focusing to lift yes. them up and, yeah. We have a friend uh, named Simcha and Anon. Anon grew up into a relationship with him because his mom is my mom's best friend. So I was born into that relationship and uh, faded away my uh, mom's still best friends. And my mom each time we come to his well, you should really go see Anon. Uh, not, was not my cup of tea of a friend. He married a woman who wants to homeschool. I mean, it won't be too long. Mm -hmm. Who wants to, but it's nice to go into the pickle. Of... Is it happy? It's real happy. <laughs> she, wants, she, she chose to uh, homeschool her kids, which is abnormal in Israel. It's, it, it's, it's so. Yeah. And so when she heard that we were coming to Israel, that was five years ago, she called my mom and she said, I got to meet them. I got to meet them because I want to learn about homeschooling. So five years ago was our first trip to Israel to go and share the good news with all these people that we know, having them covered in prayers. And somehow, I wrote down and God gave us the names of who people should start praying for. I had on on. And it was really weird because I said, I don't know, but I even see him. But people start praying for him. So his wife said, we have to go, they have to come to our house. We went to see them. And my mom, who was number one against the gospel, kind of a poor she Paul, was a free, yeah, free. Yeah. So, because she said, if we were five years ago to go to everybody she knows and tell them about Yeshua, there'll be a war. She's going to win the war, and all these people are going to cut us off. Oh. So we have to make our choices because she's oh. going to make it known that wherever we go, we're bringing this poison, and she's going to tell them, lock the door, don't let them in. She came to faith about the gun. Yeah. 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 She came to face fire. She's fire inside. She's not opening her mouth yet, but my father came to faith two, two, three weeks ago. So God is doing for five years nothing, 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 nothing. People, if you wanted to take us to a court four years ago, say, any, any numbers? <laughs> 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 say, no, but, no, people are No, but we said the truth. We said everybody we've shared with and has been prayed for, they are never going to be the same. And we knew that to be absolutely true. Right? We knew that God was in, in the business of <laughs> dealing with their hearts and minds yes. through yes. the Spirit. So back to some kind of See, I don't know. Either way, we went to see them. My mom called five years ago, unsaved woman at the time. And she said, listen. As he put her foot out of the car, first visit, first <laughs> visit. Gosh, so scary, you know, first time ever. And she said, if you were to open your mouth about Yeshua, they will kick you out of the house mm -hmm. to be prepared. So if I were you... I will only speak about homeschooling. So here we go, reunited, and I've met, never met Anon, we reunite after years and years and years, and she's fired, this girl, she's like, doesn't Why stop. And uh, we share about homeschooling, blah, 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 finish. And then Leonardo says, you know, right before we came here, Iris, my mom called, and she said that if you would tell you really what we're about, you're gonna kick us out of the house and hate us forever. Is that possible? And they said, no. No, we want to know you guys. No, we really no. know who want to know. What is it? And so we shared, shared a whole faith. And she was crying the whole time. And he was like, never been touched like that before. This is amazing. We said, let's pray. We stood. We never prayed. It was like that kind of a situation. <laughs> and we pray and they cry. And he said, what happened? So just like that. You just talk to him? Just like that. <laughs> so that's the kind of known. That's called discipling free believers. In other words, you're walking with the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven becomes present to people who've never experienced before, yeah. and they're being yeah. disciples. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but the disciples themselves were not necessarily born again and, right. and filled and equipped until basically the day of Pentecost. Right. And if you look at the number of times in the Bible where Jesus says, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how could you ask that? Right. You know, like that? And, uh, and obviously Peter's turned <coughs> away a few times. And the, and the, you know, they had information. Yeah. And they perhaps had some amount of, uh, of the Spirit to operate in, but it really was not an 
activated. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were using Sipkan in our known as a teaching example because uh, we, in the subsequent years, we put more time into that relationship. They chose, after the third year, we got there. Well, oh, let's back up. When we came out of the visit, we were everybody who were praying. We just, there were just 200 in the first year. And we said, we just met Simcha and Arnold. This is what happened. Please pray. The kids are obnoxious. <laughs> Can't even say <laughs> one word without the screaming drama, trauma. Please pray for the kids. The second time they came to see us in Jerusalem, within that first year, I gave her the New Testament in Hebrew. She said, cool. She said, no. Nah. She's sitting on the New Testament. Okay? <laughs> but that was her attitude, and it was really awful. The second year Eric came... Be on it, her, her, um, you say something, and she would just fire something off, or the rabbi say, or this or that. And it was, you could say, speak for half an hour, and then she would say something that basically made you believe she didn't hear one word you said. This was a maddening relationship. <laughs> but we went back to the States and we had pictures of the two kids and we went to children, that parents said yes, and had targeted prayers for the children. The next year we come back to Israel and we gathered 46 people to pray for Simcha and Anon and then about 15 kids to pray for the kids. And we arrived to Israel and she calls us, I'm coming over, it's a long drive. And they come, she comes at the door and she stands like that. She's very actress and she points at her kids and says, hi. I'm looking at her and she said, and said, what? She said, and she walks in and these kids are just fabulous. They are kids' favorite friends. And I said, Simcha, what happened? She said, you should tell me. Said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, I'm coming over every Shabbat. I'm going to bring food. I'm going to cook. And she did all the whole three or four months we were there, but for a couple of exceptions. And we went so much deeper. And now you got to understand, we don't minister alone because this is home church. We have organic home church in Israel, meaning our believing friends come by because we love people and we love to do life together. And so that's part of the fabric of our life. And then the many, many people that we love, respect, care for, who don't yet know Yeshua. And by those, those three things are absolutely necessary. If you have an agenda and you're going to love better when the person's, you know, out of uh, sin and out of all that, I mean, people right. smell that a mile away. Oh, yes. You either have this love for them in advance, right. or you have nothing really right. Right. So, But then these people all get to meet, and so we had call them the cream of the crop, because we are blessed with beautiful friends who really love the Lord and serve many of them in incredible ways, and they would be there and say, hey, it's people coming over, they don't know the Lord, and they would just, this is everything to me. I, this is, you know, I live for this. And, and it would just be natural, the whole days together. And so they're being discipled. They would say, different people have said to us, we, did not, we don't know a world like this that existed. Particularly where it was one day Simcha and Anona there. They already came every Shabbat. So they're already in a comfortable talking about Yeshua, singing the song, just normal. What we do, normal, is unbelievable for the unsaved. But you see, what the problem is that when somebody unsaved comes, we start being normal. We start being more like them. So we want to sing a song, maybe one of them pray with passion. When somebody could hold, give me the band instead of, Lord! You know, so we start being who we are when they come in. But if we are who we are, regardless, they go, who are you? What, what, what is it? So Simcha is there, and another friend comes in, Bella, had, had, Bella and her husband had 47 people praying for them. One more than Simcha and Arnon. I'm talking about, going back about four years ago, and Bella is asking questions about Jesus. Ah, you know. And Simcha is defending Yeshua and answering back to Bella. And we're just sitting and watching the whole thing. <laughs> Bella is attacking. An unbeliever <laughs> sharing the good news and, and correcting then, this person. Say, no, 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 no. He's Jewish. What are you doing? <laughs> but then Bella says, why are you talking? Are you a believer? She says, no, not yet. So why are you doing that? And Simcha says, I have 46 people praying for me. And Bella says, open your computer. How many praying for me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's, let's get to this night. Wait, wait, wait. We're telling, that's a good step. We're telling Bella, you have 47. And she goes to Simcha and says, I have more. But you know what? These people, <laughs> these people, these people mm -hmm. don't have one normal day. If they are targeted in prayers, one question, do we believe they're going to get saved? 
Yes. 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 Well, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. Five years ago, I didn't believe it. Mm. I, 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 was, it. I wanted to believe it, but I couldn't. Yeah. My mom was the one who's doing war against that. Yeah. She was going to get say, I, I don't believe it. I would like to believe it. We wouldn't but, say we don't believe it. We just simply were like those unbelieving yeah, believers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, we hoped it would happen. Yeah. And, and my father got said seriously two or three weeks ago, he had a visit from the Lord in the middle of the night. That was my, was we all prayed, but that was specifically my prayer that he drove the car and said, I just feel the Lord says, let's pray for Abba. We all prayed, and then I prayed so specifically, like almost ridiculous, Who, why, like what is it? I prayed that you would call his name, that his leg is going to be shaken, that he will feel pressure in his body, heat coming over, and if need be, appear to him in the room, if need be. <laughs> but two days later, the whole thing to the exact is happening. I'm not telling you, Sue, so while she's praying well. But I'm telling you that all of this had happened, and he called so excited to tell us what happened. And you know what goes here? I'm going to be transparent. Well, he loves God now, but he... We didn't share the testimony. So it's a question of, did he have a God wake-up call, or did he have a revelation of Yeshua? Yeah. So, Ellie Moore, that's known as dad, he grew up in, uh, until he was like six or seven in Baghdad, and was from a very, very uh, religious family, and his grandfather was the chief, <coughs> chief rabbi in Baghdad, and he had practically memorized the entire Tanakh, mm -hmm. and was a very wealthy family, and then they had to flee for their lives in the late 40s, and literally running, you know, getting shot at, camels smuggled out of Baghdad to Israel, separated from his parents, who were still in Baghdad, and from his one sister, and was in a uh, kibbutz without his family, and didn't speak Hebrew, had learned Hebrew, all, had all these experiences. So he went, he became, when Una was that age, five or six, she asked her dad if God exists. He said, if he exists, I don't think so, but if he exists, he's way too busy to deal with people like us. He's dealing with countries and kings and queens and presidents and stuff. And what happens when you die? And he said, afterwards, it's over. And so Una lived in terror that all of everything adds up to absolutely nothing because basically it just ends. Mm -hmm. So that's Ellie Moore. So this is information you would have. And you'd be praying knowing that this is the person you're praying for. And uh, the sustained witness to Ellie got him to the point where about a year and a half ago, he said, your faith is amazing. The one you believe in is amazing. I've never met people like this, but I will never believe. It's like, I see it, but never me. Okay, so that's, and that's pretty much where it stayed. Then he got real vulnerable, because three months ago, they were crossing the street, and someone backed up and hit him and his mom. It's not three months later, just getting out of the hospital in the rehab. So he's home every night. He's all day in the hospital with his wife, and home every night on and he's reading the emails that we send, we put them on this list. The small, we have a Gideon's group, you're all invited to consider that. That's a lot of up-close details from our own practically every day. And those are people that really, really are, are making this whole thing move forward. And we put them on the list. So we have these unbelievers reading the most intimate, incredible details of what God is doing in and through this mission and these people's lives and our prayer needs and everything else. And he gets home every night and he reads them. I mean, the deepest of the deep, but he's reading it. He's like making that a priority. And then he, he's sleeping, and one night he, um, he hears his name being called. He assumes it's his wife. And he realizes she's not here. And then? And then he said the voice was so loud, and the voice called his name. And it was deep, and said, Ellie! And he woke up, and he knew it was God. And the thing that melted him the most was God knew his name. Mm -hmm. And then he said that his leg started shaking so badly, the shake went all the way up to his chest, then he felt like somebody was pressing on his chest so intensely, and then he felt a heat wave coming from the feet all the way to his head. He said his head was burning fire, and all he could say is, God, don't take me yet. I don't have a life, I don't have a life, don't take me yet. So the moment he uttered the name God, it all stopped. And then a memory came to his mind that he forgot. When he was six years old in Baghdad, his siblings were sleeping in a guest room upstairs, and he begged them that he can sleep there too. So he went for one night to sleep in that guest room, and in the middle of the night, he was awakened because somebody came into the room. He had white hair, he had a white beard, he was glowing. And he sat down with him for a long time and talked to him about many, many, many things, and then he's left. 
And my father said he never went back to that room. <laughs> this was 68 years ago. He yeah. forgot it. He forgot it. And that, when he heard God's voice, he remembered. Now go back a little bit. What was my prayer? <laughs> Call his name. Shake his body. If have heat through his body. If need be. If need be. <laughs> appear in the room. God did all of that. He did the appearance 68 years ago, but the rest of it, and he brought it all back together. But here my father is calling me to tell me what happened, and I'm listening, and then, wait, 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 Shiva is next to me. Luigi is next to me. Can you just repeat the whole thing? And he's saying it, and you know what goes in my mind? I'm telling you, because it's terrible. What goes in my mind, well, he had an experience with God, he's going to forget about it tomorrow. Surely did not have an experience with Jesus. He doesn't put that the white man was Jesus. He thinks it's maybe just a prophet. The whole you saying thing. That Jesus is a white man? No. But anyway, <laughs> 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 <Okay. laughs> all of this goes here. What I have to nail it down is the most religious thing ever. Not positive. <clears throat> I'm telling my dad, oh, that's amazing. Let's pray. And I'm praying, not really from here. Oh, thank you, Abba, for that. It's been so amazing. Like, thank you, God. I'm praying. Lord, in the name of Yeshua, I just thanking you that you have paid a price, that you have died on the cross, that the Lamb of God that is you, that my Father now believes in you. I th I'm declaring. So, but I'm telling you, it was not coming from like, ah, it was it came out of fear. And I was ready for my dad, next step, to say, cut no, no, this no, thing off. You don't understand. That wasn't like that. And he says, Amen. He says, Thank you. Amen. Hmm. Well, does he really believe that it could be? And then you have no idea how many more times I questioned until the friend got the God saying, Could you please stop? Could you please stop? Why? But I'm telling you because we are looking for, I had no problem praying, believing in praise. I believe that God would bring that prayer to reality. But I had a problem believing that He brought it to reality. Yeah. So what is it here? Yes. Who's playing yes. on my mind? Yeah. Because new creation is a new creation. Yes. Right? What was, was, it doesn't matter. We don't live in yesterday because it said, today, I died for you. Today, pick up the cross and follow me. New creation today. So what is new creation? Eternal life, right? Never, ever, ever, anything bad will happen to my spirit. It's going to happen to my body, but my spirit knows where it's going. Yeah. There's no more fear because he says, do not fear the fear. He's with me wherever Sorry. I go. I am immortal being, all capable, because when God says, it will be done. So yes. this is new creation. So I'm going to ask you to join, join this guy. Go on adventure and find when you get stuck. And when you get stuck, it's not you. It's not like Uno Bella is messed up. It's who is operating yes. on me right now yes. that doesn't allow me to see yes. the glory of God yes. and I'm never sure I rebuke you and get away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we got up, we, we don't usually plan anything other than that we're available. But I, I heard the Lord say that we should include a teaching that we've been under this year that's been priceless to us. And we're the, I think you understand the prayer mission. We don't really need to say a whole lot more about that. And if you choose to join up, you sign up afterwards, and then you'll receive all the archives of everything we've sent this year, and then move it forward. But I don't know about you guys, but we have discovered there's a mystery in the church. Like the, it's no problem figuring out why the world is messed up and why really screwy and and uncomfortable and terrible things happen when you're surrounded with the stuff that where, where people are not under the blood. <coughs> But we were really or people, I'm sorry, what, what was are it? not under the blood of Jesus. In oh, other words, um, for, for the unsaved. Yeah. Uh, and beautiful. we were beautiful unsaved people. I have to say that. There's, there's, God doesn't make junk. That's right. So no, although no, there's no, that no, bit no. of leaven in there and it does affect the whole thing, but the, what the thing is, is not hopefully That's right. broke. I mean, there's That's beautiful right. stuff. And people get the feeling that we don't know that. And if, if you've lived both parts of your life, the before and the after, you know, that it makes some sense that there were some materials he was working in those materials before you really knew who he was. But what about in the church? So, let me keep this happy. Uh, we had a year last year that was unlike any other year where we saw, because 
we found ourselves in situations where people thought we had something that maybe they could use. Some amount of influence, some amount of an audience, or something. And so we had multiple situations where people became our best, best friends, like pajama friends, like really like total transparent friends. And then the agenda came up, and it'd be like something like, hey, we gotta go to Heidi Baker's and African, we're gonna do this together, we're gonna do that together. We say, look, we bless you, but we cannot, because our ministry says it's like we're at the kitchen table in Israel. That, I mean, we're, it's this, that's where we're called to be, that's what we do. So we can't become the Jewish piece in this other ministry mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. thing that, and like, whoosh, steel shutter came down. Yeah. No more friend. Just boom, <laughs> end of story. And, and others, we want you to come under this covering, big, uh -huh. huge uh, uh -huh. ministry <laughs> covering, and we're going to fast track you to this and that. We've got hundreds of congregations. We'll send out letters to all of them and this and that. And then someone who we really trust drove across town and said, do not do that. And we know this person because they helped birth this mission. You wouldn't take a Shabbat nap and set it aside and drive all the way across Dallas to say, don't do that. We found out later why. So in we the had, spirit. You didn't even know that we're debating that. Right. It's kind so, of amazing. <laughs> so then the way we were treated by that group, we were took completely blacklisted. Yeah. Because they had been wooing us for a couple of years. And then we said, look, we, just, we can't do it. So we met a gentleman about a year and a half ago, uh, a, a couple, Joe and Denise Bradford. And they're in uh, inner city ministry. And they're very effective. And he's gotten to be known because they made a feature film about him. And so he's all over the place with, with this thing that he does, which is very beautiful, basically being a father to the fatherless. And, and you know, they just bring trucks into the inner city, and they make these care packages, and they go to door to door, and they, and they make choirs, and they get kids engaged in music, and all this kind of stuff. So he's got this beautiful, thriving ministry. But in the background, about 15 years ago, the Lord unpacked to him the most exquisite picture of how the enemy operates. And it was deep. And we met him at a meeting with uh, some people in, in Nashville. And then they put our family, me and Una, and Denise and Joe in the middle of the room and said, I feel that we should pray over both these couples. And we held hands. And they basically almost made a covenantal kind of marriage. We didn't know these people at all. We had heard about them, but we'd never had a conversation. We had that meeting, and then we took off, and we were gone. And we started a phone relationship with them, and then we came back through Nashville. And it was like they shared a little bit, and they, they said, we want that. We want this teaching. I said, well, how much do you want? He said, we want the whole thing. And he said, okay, so all of these things that happened to us, just to put a frame on them, everything that Joe gave us was given so that we could love more effectively people who were hurting us. Yes. Because we would know what's operating behind that. Yes. And so we yes. would be free from this brokenheartedness that we used to take us weeks and months to process. There's still that first or second day, it's like, I can't believe it's happening again. <laughs> right, right. But immediately you recognize, oh my God. Yes. And so it doesn't feel good, but after a while, so you could literally effectively yes. pray. So but the secret of success is not to expect it. Yes. Because if we know that sooner or later it right. could happen, this, this, mm -hmm. that, then we won't love with it. That's right. So there, there's, a, it's a basic teaching and it's really not, it doesn't change anything about anything that you believe. It doesn't change anything about who Jesus is or who the enemy is. It's more like if you understood how sincere the enemy is trying, you know, those who he can't, like you're saved, so he can't have you, yeah. right? But can he put you to sleep? Yeah. Can he put you in the vision? Yes. yes. Can he render you ineffective? Yes. Mm -hmm. Relatively speaking, absolutely. Yes. So, the do you want those things? To, do you want him to have that kind of sway on you? Of course not. This is not about del deliverance. This yeah. is not a deliverance ministry mm -hmm. message. Yeah. It's about generals. Yes. yes. Okay, and you might know some of this language, and it might be transposed to other teachings. It's not important. Uh -huh. We're going to do, we asked his permission, because as we were going through it, we had another experience, and he'd say, we'd call him, this happened. He's welcome to school. <laughs> and after a while, we really understood that that's what was going on. So but we have to frame it. I think we tend to look at faith as something out. It's like something we're trying to get to. And we tend to look at the enemy's way of walking as something out that's coming launched at us. But really, it's all in. Yes, so the war begins 
here. Yes. Yes. The breakthrough is coming <laughs> here. Yes. Yes. Overcoming is not, I'm going to help you to overcome your issues. It's yes. overcoming here. Yes. You got to get the plank out of your own life. Yes. 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 So not even that, I'll, it's okay. not about you. My life is not about you. My That's life right. is about him, yes. and so how do I walk forward while all mm -hmm. this happens? I'm not going to focus on you. I'm just going to remove what comes so I can keep walking. Amen. 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 Okay, That's so good. whatever you're going to hear, yeah. don't say, oh, yeah, my mom has this. Yeah, my mom, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Where, do, where does it hit you? Yes. And it hits us constantly all day long. Yes. So because, right. you know, and I used to have it 10 years ago, you're speaking in five. Because <laughs> uh -huh, sure. it hit us every opportunity. Yes. So this is the picture. The enemy, there is an enemy, right? right. Yes. My father said there's no enemy. Stop talking about Satan, Satan, Satan. There's no <laughs> Satan in the Bible. So, oh my gosh, let's open. Because in the Old Testament, they don't call him Satan. Maybe once. Yes. In the New Testament, he sure keep pointing out. But my father doesn't want to look at the New Testament. So how do you go? Well, he's, he has had experienced my mom's car accident. says, that's not from God. Like, what was that about? Yeah. So he's... But either way, so there is an enemy. Yeah. And imagine, right, it says in the book of Revelation that the, the dragon has how many heads? Seven, seven, seven heads. Yeah. So it's very interesting enemy. It's an enemy with seven heads walking around the house. Just walking. Where is the house? Yeah. This is the house. Yes. Yes. Right. He's walking around, walking around, walking around. Yeah. Let's go back to this house. Yeah. No mercy. No grace. Mm, yeah. But we are so built by God's DNA uh -huh. that we come to Him with kind of a, what is it? A little bit of grace, favor? Can, <laughs> can we talk about it, negotiate? Yeah. No! No! So this position is wrong. This right. position is not equipped for war. But right. God says, put on the full armor of come God and yes. be ready. The yes. heaven is packed with angels, with weapons. Yeah. This is not La La Land. This is a war. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to sleep while the Lord will fight my fights. No, the Lord says, stay awake. Why yeah. will you sleep? Stay yeah. awake. Yes. Now he's going oh, around and he's looking for a crack in the window. He knows the door won't be open because yeah. it's covered by the blood of the yes. shirt. Amen. Yeah. But a little bit when it comes here, maybe that would be. And the moment he finds a little yes. crack that even just yes. an ant can yes. walk in, yes, yes, he's coming in. That's right. And when he's yeah. coming in, he's first genera. Yeah. We're not talking demons. We're not yeah. talking like manifestation. These are ancient powers. Yeah. The first one is pride. Mm -hmm. He cannot bring his six heads, or generals if you may, in unless pride comes in. Mm -hmm. Why was Satan sent, Lucifer was sent out of heaven? Right. 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 Why, why yes. Jesus died eventually, like the biggest yes. sin is pride. That's right. That's so right. without pride, we have humility. And when we have humility, That's we stand right. right with God. So, there will be no issues if this was right. That's but right. we are corrupted. Yes. Yes. And so the first job is to recognize here when pride comes in. Yes. Now, we were clueless because we are clueless. We are just who we are. We seldom take this, we take this and take your part. I can analyze right. it really well. Right. But this, <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry, let me say one thing about pride. You know, to work. To walk forward in, in your faith, obviously, if you read the Sermon on the Mount and, and all these other places where you realize, this is incredible. This is the world turned upside down. This is why it's so attractive, because what Jesus taught was, you know, and, and James, you know, let the one who's no one, you have the seat of honor, and all this that's stuff. Right. It's like, I like that. That's, that's the whole world turned upside down. So, probably most of us are not egomaniacs anymore, and we're probably not completely consumed with self, and and pretty hard to offend. But are we offendable? Mm -hmm. yes. So we have a situation, I'll just use the tiniest example real quick. We speak to this big congregation every year uh, <coughs> for two years, and then we show up and it's like, we can't get the time of day. It's like the rabbi just doesn't look at us, he just hardly wants to, you know, it's just. And we called Joe, and I said, Joe, gosh, Which Rabbi so-and-so is Packed his pride. I mean, this man, he just packed his pride. Because we already learned about pride. And Joe <laughs> says, <coughs> why do you care? What makes you think you have a right to be some special guy? And maybe, uh, obviously, you're, you have the issue. So you recognize, correct, there's an issue of pride. But it's not in him, it's in you. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to hear that. Yeah. But, but it's justified, it's justified, yes. it's just basic human being we 
reality. I mean, we're just yeah. being nice, nice, and it's, it's pride. So this is where we start going, why do I deserve, why, why, why am I even thinking that? Why do we need men recognition? Seriously, why do we want men recognition? Oh, yeah. I think what we're really after is God's recognition, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. If God's recognition and men's recognition will be very different. Yeah. And yet we're after men's recognition. Because they approve our relationship with God. Yeah. Why do we need that? Let me introduce one other, which is <laughs> the general of harlotry. And I'm not talking about sexual harlotry per se, although that could be part of it. But that is the one who, no matter how much they get, they need more. So let's just say that we have 3,000 people on our prayer team, and we sit with Billy Graham, he's got 30 million or whatever. Or you have a, a movie actor who makes $10 million a movie and wants to end his own life because the one up the street makes 25. Okay, there's a general. Whatever amount of whatever you have, it's not enough. Yeah. And I have what we call the Nashville handshake, but it transposes to anywhere. <laughs> For all the pastors and the movers and shakers around, you're talking to this one, but then so-and-so walks in. And you, uh -huh. Okay, harlotry. Yeah. Okay, so. But harlotry, it's really when you look in, when does it kick in? It's only when pride comes in, I deserve. So I the rabbi it. who wouldn't give us the time of day was busy with something more important. Yeah. And he was growing his empire of beautiful stuff because he's a great guy and did wonderful things. And, but. Yes. Yes. Networking. Yeah, that's bad. Networking is a general of harlotry basically telling you this. Yes. God is not big enough to, to bring, bring you his, to the yeah. you're supposed to have. His reality <laughs> will unfold according to your great yeah. abilities. Right. Your God is pretty small. So you, <laughs> Jesus, can you just wait a second? i got to go make my future. And, I, and it's <laughs> exhausting. I mean, I'd rather God do it, you know, because it's exhausting. Yeah. You know, I, how I yeah. do <laughs> you know, it. Really how, how vulnerable we have to leave ourselves once we've yes. heard these things. We have five months to travel, and we're not going ahead of God. So we're not yeah. making all the appointments. We're not calling in all of our best playing cards. And because of that, incredible meetings happen with people. Individuals yes. will go for one yes. intercessor on the other side of New Mexico and drive 500 miles. Although there's a congregation with 200 people yes. who will probably get a nice love offering. And, and all of that, no, I'm serious, this is, this yes. is war. Yes. I'm not saying you have to be a hippie and you have yes. to care nothing about anything and just whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not whatever is filled. We're just no. talking about stewardship, the responsible action, all that stuff still comes to bear. Yeah. But we're talking about how the enemy uses yes. your best attributes yes. but can turn them around because that's what he does. He never Thank operates you. in a vacuum. He always takes Thank things that are good and of value and then he puts a twist on it uh -huh. and all of a sudden they're... Another one is the spirit of Leviathan, that's the spirit of separation and confusion and chaos. Yes. Yes. You know, it's very interesting that when Moses, I hope you hear me in the right heart, when God says to Moses, go and speak, he says, but I can't. I know. Yeah, I know. But later he speaks. Yes. He totally speaks. Yes. He forgot that he can't. That's because he remember who God is. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because it, it's because of... Um, yeah. A lot of times, what's starting to happen is um, you learn like coping skills. You 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 see those triggers coming, you know. And but before you, you know, I was oblivious. But now, so like, let's continue. If you're self-aware, take yeah. that to the side. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next one, and I'm not cutting yeah. it. No, 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 just no, let's continue. This is next so we can give you the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first one is pride. Search your heart. Look when you start feeling like. What about me? Or I hope they're gonna call my name. Or I hope they're gonna notice I'm here. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, please remove this pride out of me because it's not of you. It's God. So if we believe that when we say asking God something that is according to His will, it's done, then it's done. So now it's question: How do you come to the prayers to remove this general? So we're coming into the general of unbelief. And general of unbelief, it's really intense. Uh, the main, the main. Symptoms that you can start looking at yourself is fear. Fear yes. of money, not having enough or having yes. too much, not knowing how to deal with that. Fear of weather. I often have fear of having too much money. A lot of people are fearful to be overly blessed. I mean, it's like fearful. Happy, happy. Fear, fear of. Uh, that's that's a real fear. <laughs> fear of money, fear of weather, fear of sickness. Fear of fear is yes. all yeah. when the unbelief is yeah. operating on us, mm -hmm. and the opposite of unbelief is 
So, if I have, I'm suffering from unbelief right now, and I'm thinking, well, we need to go to Mexico, we don't have enough connections there, God didn't open anything, we don't know why we're going exactly, we had a plans to change, we don't have enough money. Okay, you have some things, relationship in Mexico, you can help me, I should talk to you. You look like you have, look like you have a lot of money, I should talk to you. And you look like you can be like in a spirit, you can speak to me. This is all operating of unbelief. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. no. That's right. God, you want us to go to Mexico. Our plans change. We don't know where the money comes from. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Why are you smiling? Oh, God is creating such an adventure in Mexico. We're going to this. We don't know what's going to look like. This is we true, by the way. We are going. Yeah, our plans yeah. all were changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief, hear me in a good heart, yes. would tell you, you are depending on this medicine. Without this medicine, you're in a room dark with only flashlight. Uh -huh. That's unbelief operating with yeah. you. Uh -huh. <sighs> unbelief would tell you that your father had this experience, but it wasn't really what he thought. Unbelief would tell me that um, there's just 30 people here. How is that going to move mountains? You could have been spoken in another place, and now we'd be now mixing with harlotry and fire. Yes. So you start searching, yes. and God says, take yeah. every thought yes. captive. Yes. So if yes. you were to take every thought, my sister thought it's just the fruit of your heart. So he's not even talking about what we're talking because Jesus knew what everybody's thinking before they even opened the mouth. And Daniel was able to receive the dream of the King Darius without knowing what the dream got the solution. So our God is huge. And we're sitting with this tiny unbelief, but Lord, and go, break my unbelief. Break my We have done that. We start reading about unbelief. We're like, it's all <coughs> over because if we were raised... So we're considered strong believers. We live a lifestyle that other people are happy we even do that. But the general is not just a worker. He's ancient mm -hmm. yeah. and he's knowledgeable and he has billions of hours of ex practical experience. So if there is an opening, he's going to get it. Yeah. But he can't even come close once you understand what this thing is. And what you're calling upon the name of So faith, the best place to go to be on the faith is the book of James. James? Well, he says, if you have two thoughts, you're like a wave in the mm -hmm. sea. And mm -hmm. don't, but double minded, you come with a doubt to the Lord. Every doubt, yes. every yes. doubt is unbelief managed to get in. By the way, this teaching, when Joe gives it to us, he knows the entire, he literally, <coughs> he'll speak for two hours on the phone and he'll give us 60 scriptures, but he knows them all. He's quoting them by heart. He gives us the address, and he not only memorizes them, but he he literally has the Lord saturated him. So everything, and also we're looking at the New Testament. It's like, oh my God, this is beautiful. I mean, he takes it's this overlay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. It's very beautiful. Matter of fact, if you sign up, um, not only do we get his permission to do this, but he because he has this a group, his intercessors group, and they cover us. But uh, it was all inside, and we didn't even know if we were supposed to be sharing this. He said, no, I'm giving a simplified, this is a simplified view. Yeah. But you see, what is the bottom line? My father, my father says, in my picture, there's no space for God. I mean, remember, that's not my father today. We moved. But there's no picture for God, blah, 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 blah. And we look and go, we want to go home. We'll pop and just stop this mission, because what's the point? What's the point? Where are the prayers? And instead go, in the name of Yeshua, spirit of plight, get out of my brother. Yeah. And we yeah. say in authority, we're not screaming, we're not shaking him, we're not throwing yeah. him on the floor. We say it here, with faith and move mountain, and all of a sudden he calls, and we, and we ask the team, we say, spirit of unbelief, he sits on my sister. Please pray it out. So now you know what it is, you pray it out. First you pray it here, so when mm -hmm. you go and pray for my sister, yeah. You are standing in faith yes. asking that to be. So we've covered four so far. Uh, pride and its opposite, which is? Humility. Humility. Unbelief. Okay. Go ahead and do them in order because you have the brain. Pride. Pride. Yeah. Right, it's humility. Mm -hmm. And when he talks about it's a narrow door, the big door is the pride, the narrow door is humility. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> God, it's just a nobody, the cause. <laughs> Alone, the, the, on the, I mean, this is the reality. It's very easy to get to right size. 
If we remember who we're looking at and what he has done for us, we get straight to humility. It's when we start forgetting and the focus is the eyes are not on Jesus anymore, yes. but he's got all things are possible and look at my life, I'm doing yes. great. And mental yes. cognition, that's when we move from the cross. Yes. Okay, five, a down a tree, more, 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 more. The ladder, I gotta climb up in the ladder, I gotta succeed, this is the top. Hey, there's no top, we're already at the top. What else do you want? That's right. You got salvation, you're never gonna die, you're gonna go to heaven, you're Jerusalem, it's the future is secure. Where are you trying to go? Who are you trying to network to get to somewhere? We're here. So that's, yeah. So we did harlotries, the opposite is content. <coughs> then we have um, unbelief, which is the opposite is faith. And then we're getting into the nasty one, which is religion. Well, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus who died on the cross. So my brother, gosh, why does it have to operate in a way was good? Because he, I got to hear from my dad, amen. Yeah. But how many times do we say, you know, we can't come to shoes like that on Sunday? It's not going to work. Or why do you say that in front of the speaker? We are packed. This is the way things are. They never change. This is, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. spirit. And in faith, we take people apart. He was talking to them. He was shaking. He was saying that. Be quiet already. The Lord has moved and let the Lord yes. do what the Lord is doing. So the opposite of spirit of religion is freedom. And really, we have to start. I had a religion I would never touch antibiotics in my life. I would never touch it. I would never touch it. That's just been my religion. And then a few days ago, when we go, I was sick and the Lord said take antibiotics. And I had to break this box of like, religion. Oh, then do whatever the Lord says to do. <laughs> so, Next is idolatry, which is really hard. Is anything that we make an idol that mm -hmm. is not fully depending on God. Mm -hmm. Almost depending on God, or at times depending on God, that's an idol. So, medicine, if it becomes, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. If the medicine becomes your God, mm -hmm. what happens yeah. if they stop using, creating that medicine anymore? Yeah. Then, uh -huh. God, I need your help. How about God, I need your help? And I will use whatever medicine you want me to use. Vitamins. I'm going to the shelf of vitamins and I go, God, what do you want me to use? And he goes, nothing tonight. Okay, God, what do you want me to use? I'll just take the vitamin D. Take three of them. Three? It says one. Take three of them. Okay. Letting God eat into every aspect yes. that we depend on him on the things we don't have to depend on. Yes. You know, I depend on God anytime I go to the bathroom. And I flash the toilet. I said, I just make it go down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You travel in so many yeah. houses and you never know what happened when you press the thing. So I learned to pray. I depend on you. It's my heart. It's my heart. But we have to be. <coughs> That's very heavy. But we have to be so depending on him that we're not depending on ourselves. We're not depending on a great mind. We're not depending on Pastor Chuck. We're not depending on this house that provides this mm -hmm. place. We're not depending on a car yes. that takes us here. We're not depending on our money. We're not depending mm -hmm. on our lack of money. We're not depending on our faith. Yeah. We're only depending on God. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that's a really hard one. Because mm -hmm. depending on self, it just makes sense. Come on, at the end of the day, yes, it's it you and God, and you should depend on yourself. No! Oh. <laughs> you, know, you can make your own righteousness an idol. You can make your, your right. loved ones an idol. I mean, that's it's... Right. Uh, it's the deluxe plan, so good on. And after religion uh, uh, um, comes the finale. The finale for us is the end, for the enemy is the beginning. Mm -hmm. We must think, oh, we've got fighting, oh, we've got this. He doesn't care about all of that. He just cares about one thing. Take a net, <coughs> done. Key of the store, finish with your next, <coughs> done, finish. Sure Death. Mm -hmm. The opposite of this is life. Yes. So, given that he's roaring like a lion, here to destroy, kill, and whatever, he just wants <laughs> from the beginning of time, not yes. when you were born, from the beginning of time, to make yes. sure you are out. Yes. So, yes. however, he, he can't walk in with the spirit of death. Right. He has no way, when we are covered in the blood of Yeshua, he, can, he can't touch us. That's right. But if pride came in, yeah. and harlotry, yes. and religion, yes. and unbelief, Yes. And now we are all divided in the spirit of Leviathan, like, oh, that's not good, and that's not good, we're not yes. united. He is now, has all the tools in his hands mm. to get you isolated, yes. depressed, yes. depends on anything else but yes. God, and yes. he got you to go to sleep. That's the one that says, what's the use anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the tool, the key for the heaven, 
to permit what is in heaven and to forbid what is in heaven, to create kingdom of heaven here on earth, the key is the prayers. Talking to God, yes. mm -hmm. believing that when we talk it to yes. heaven, knowing that two of us together, Yeshua is right there, knowing that God, all things are possible, not living in the realm of this earth, but living yes. in his kingdom, visiting here like aliens, just yes. Amen. Amen. bringing love, <laughs> gathering people to where we go next, it all Amen. depends on prayers. Yes. Now you go to most believers and you go, do you believe that when he prays it's going to happen? To some degree. I mean, it's possible if, if God wants it to be. You know, secular, they live different life. They get a dream and they pursue it and it happens. They have so much energy. They're so focused and they're going for it. And we believers that the Lord, the, the Lord will be done. I mean, if God wants it, it's going to happen. We become so passive. We become so, it's okay. I mean, the Lord will find my fire. Yeah. Yeah. I read my Bible, I know my two scriptures yeah. by heart. Mm -hmm. How many do you know? Did you know do you, did you know you do you know your verses by heart? I mean, mm -hmm. do you have them plug around your house? We just do all these religious things uh -huh. and you become sleepier and sleepier and sleepier. Yes. When Yeshua said yes. they said, Master said faith, mm -hmm. yes. you will get this mountain. And yes. another says the mountain they gotta move is all this junk. That the generals don't live in us, they can't. They can't live where the, bo the body of Yeshua is. But they bang us and they break our arm and then they break our leg. And it's just so hard to just walk. When you start recognizing, say so you come to me and say, you know what you were talking about is absolutely junk. Why well, don't come to me with humility? Do you believe in me? It makes me feel really like I want to go home and stop. What operating? Because God does not operate like that. There was pride. And religion and some spirit of death was operating on. That's not you. I'm sure it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> operating on I'm me to just, <laughs> <laughs> just to stop it. But you know, even that, how dare you do it to my wife? Oh my gosh, now pride coming out. The vision stopped. It's endless. But he's gone. <coughs> yes. 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 He's not interested in taking me down. If you can take me down and just one us, take yes. everybody That's down. Right. And That's right. That's right. It's a beautiful yeah. picture. It's Mother's Day, right? It's Mother's Day. <laughs> so we all, you know, there's a perfect picture uh, where God says, you know, everything you never quite got the way you wished you had gotten it, I'm, I'm here to give all of that to you. So this, when we received this uh, understanding, it was like it was like a gentle breeze. This, yeah. this is not meant to blow anyone away. Yeah. It's, it's meant to be like a fresh aroma, so as to say, wow. And yes, you can use this overlay to look at what's going on around you. Obviously, <coughs> if, you, uh, if you focus only out, then you're probably going to miss the real gem, which would be yeah. house cleaning on this side. Yes. But I mean, the how dare they turn to prayers? Yes. The spirit of yes. out yes. of Pastor So and so, out of this one. I mean, we had all kinds of back I mean seriously, ouch. Backstabbing, weird. This yes. just didn't have to be like that stuff. And then we realize over and over and over again we're dealing with it's their cheap yes. tricks. That's right. The enemy's cheap yes. tricks that happen to work. Yes. And so you say, Oh, I've seen that trick before. That's right. That's rubbish. No, no. It's not not gonna have me and you know, it changes your, your uh, joy factors can go up. Now, say if the goal is humility, right? It's content. Not, oh, I'm content, it's okay. No. I'm fulfilled. beyond fulfilled, yeah? It's faith, it's unity, it's freedom, and it's life, right? Because when all of this operate, then the spirit of the Lord is flowing, and we forget that we're on this earth, and we feel like, wow, it was like a day in heaven the whole day. It was like a dance. So then when comes a situation, like recently, somebody said something not nice, and they were wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, like, how do we walk in that, Lord, not stepping in the fight? We knew they were wrong, but in humility. Mm -hmm. But yet, how do we give that a cheek, but we don't become a doormat? Jesus was not a doormat. So how do we walk through it out? So I think that's one thing we left out, which is so important, and that lays on top of all this in a practical way, which is that these spirits, because they're ancient, the best they can hope for is that they can get you to engage. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay, and we were taught that there's a time to hide, there's a time to flee, and there's a time to fight. Okay, so if it can get you to engage, we were, um, we had information and we said, no, we can't be involved with this organization. Tell us why. And we said, we just need you to just respect us that we've made our decision. We knew we couldn't go into it. But who would say, if we say, look, it's God is speaking to us, we're not supposed to do that, be blessed. Maybe, maybe, so, but, no, but let's stop in there for a second. So we can recognize. So when say, you have to tell us why, mm -hmm. who's talking now? Mm -hmm. Who's demanding that? If you're not going to tell us why, we're going to cut you off. Who's speaking? Uh -huh. Not humility, pride. Right. So now if you're going to start talking to pride, Jesus didn't talk to the demons. <laughs> he got them out. Yeah. Go. So if we start talking to them, now we got most we in their web and we yes. walked away yes. from the shalom yes. of the Lord yes. and we're in a zoo. Yes. So we can't engage. Yes. That's you right. can't engage. Yeah. But That's when you do good. engage, you fully engage. It's in the spirit. A spirit mm -hmm. And you do war again that. And you're so engaged in that place. Yes. Because if you're going to become like this, I recognize what is on them. I don't want to leave anymore. That's what happened to me a little bit when we recognize we've done good in the school. And we rec for us, we, we went through experience with each of these gentlemen. So it, it's like manifested, not only in us, but people will bring it. And, until we scream, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Lord, just we're done with this. Okay, next. Okay, next. But part of me said, what's the point? Like, it was better not knowing in a way, or it's better just to kind of slip life through it and get to heaven, because this is so difficult. And what Joe told us, but you're here to love. Yes. I said, I don't want to love these people. I don't want to love them. They're not fun. And, and he said, Being honest. Yeah. Yeah. True. I mean, yeah. what's the point that the last attack we got was like, well, if we went in a little bit more prepared, it could have come because sign, sign, we would have, I said, yeah, but then we would have not loved them well. Well, we loved them well. Yeah. And okay. so we have to love well because that's what Jesus did. Yes. Amen. He loved well. He loved fearless. He loved all mm -hmm. the way. Yes. And was he betrayed? Yes. Was he put down? Yes. Was he marked? Yes. Was he spit on? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what could they do to us that they didn't do to him? Yeah. <laughs> and he did the ultimate in love. And this is what he did. That's, that's what it all, this is the whole thing adds up to that. So so as to say, here's the, the raw information. Here's the, you don't necessarily take this and spend all your time engaged with these things. But if there's a, what do I, have so much to remember, how do I do that? The idea is that you can love more effectively in situations where ordinarily you would just think, well, screw this, I can't, I can't deal, deal with this anymore. You understand you're, it's not the person. Now, the unsaved, they have no protection from any of these right. things at any yeah. time. Right. Not but, only that, these generals live in them, through them, and they are, this is the fabric of who they yeah, are. Of yeah. course, there's the, the spark of God in them, but this right. is who they are. Yeah. So, why do we even give you all of that? Because we have a plan. <laughs> we will equip you so you can bring salvation to them. Now, why do we care that you even care about Israel? Because God cares about Israel. Now, why God cares about Israel so much? Because he came first to them, yes. and he will come last yes. to them, because Jesus yes. is going to land where? Yeah. Jerusalem. Yes. Who are going to be the first people he's going to see when he lands? The Jewish people. Who's going to cry? Matthew 23, 39 is the key scripture for our mission. We'll close with this. We usually start with it. Yeshua is speaking to the people of Jerusalem, and he starts with, uh, Jerusalem, you have stoned the prophets. And he, you know, it sounds familiar, right? And then he gets right into it. He says, and you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the yes. name of the Lord. So while you're arguing about where the rapture comes and where the wrath comes and all this eschatological yes. stuff, when is he coming? When the Jewish people cry out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When are they doing that? According to my watch, and in the natural, it will never happen. Because there's a 2,000 year deluxe plan made to place anything having to do with faith in Yeshua to be the opposite of anything a Jewish person would ever want to touch. Yeah. I'm not going to go into church history, but you can just read yeah. on that if you haven't yeah. already. I'm sure yeah. the information is available. The history of the Jewish people in the church yeah. is a horror show. Yeah. The, um, from Haman, the book of Esther, the edict to destroy all the Jews, uh -huh. to Pharaoh and to kill all the males, mm -hmm. and on and on and on, through Hitler, mm -hmm. through yes. the pogroms, through the uh, crusades, yeah. 
and yes. on to Ahmedinejad, you have had a sustained effort to annihilate a people group. Yes. And there are hundreds of people groups that do not exist, and you don't know their names, and sometimes you read them in the Bible, all these uh -huh. Canaanites and the this and all these ites. Yeah. They're gone. Right. It's normal <laughs> that whole people groups can be wiped off the planet. The yeah. Jewish people were not a great and large number of people, and the sustained effort, an enemy, if it's not political, it's not hate-based like some kind of I'm better than you, really, it's the enemy's must-do plan. Right. He knows That's the right. scriptures, he knows yeah. he's going to be cast into the lake of fire, but it's just like if, right. a, if a bad guy came into the house <laughs> and you knew there's no way I'm going to be able to win against this bad guy, uh -huh. you wouldn't just lie there, you would fight. That's right. And he's fighting. That's right. And he's fighting against yes. the odds to... A, prove God to be a liar, because he yeah. said he would remain faithful to the Jewish people, one-sided covenant, not you do this and I'll do that. This is Abraham goes to yes. sleep, and he walks yeah. right through it. <laughs> and my faithfulness is to you until the stars fall out of the sky. As far as I know, it hasn't happened yet. So if, God, if, if, if the enemy of God can prove God to be a liar, what does that do to all of our faith? If, if literally Hitler had succeeded, what would Christians have to believe? Well, yeah. They have to believe they're replacing the theology, and well, I told you, God was done with them when they said yeah. no. Yeah. Okay, all of that is from the pit of hell. That's so right. you're dealing with our mission, and just to get fired up for a second, our mission is to see Yeshua return. Our passion is to see him return. Our lamps are trimmed. The work ahead, although he could do any of these things without our participation, he could land on the Jewish people's minds and hearts and change every one of them in an instant. But he didn't mess up the situation. People did. And we're the descendants of those people. And although I'm sure no one in this room ever kicked a Jew in the head or shot them and put them in a pit, people who called on the name of Jesus, yes. at least in name, yes. did that. That's right. And I think God wants his name That's to be right. cleared by the alive and believing yes. body of today, yes. and your repentance for things you never did. That's right, that's right. In your prayer closet yes. is, is, is yes. like a powerful, dramatic yes. explosion. And that's what that's what God is looking for. Thank Man, you look, yesterday chapter. you were at the synagogue, mm -hmm. was yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yes. The agony of a system that yes. really loves God, we yes. will hope, right? Uh -huh. But have it all set so that only Jesus, it's yeah. so painful. But you look and go, ah, oh, spirit of religion is like having a party. Spirit of pride. But I couldn't have got in without the spirit of pride. Or we got the two. Yeah. And yeah. you look and you got compassion and go, I'm going to pray these things, two things yes. out. Yes. And they have idols. The idol is the Torah. Yes. But the Jesus is the manifestation of the Torah. So it's a good idol, yes. but they use it in the wrong way. And all these rules and regulations. Yes. And it really leads to unbelief. Because if you didn't do all of this, then God can't do all of this. Mm -hmm. And when Moses stood with the stick, None of that applied. They were just focusing on faith. So, oh, they're doing all this law thing. Well, he said, it's my grace. It's efficient. Mm -hmm. yes. But he loves them because he's going to come back for them. God, what do I do with all of this? It's like such a <laughs> humongous salad. And how do I separate? And he says, just pray. Yes. Pray, believe in prayers that every yes. person you guys met right. right. yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Cover them in the prayers of oh, yes. freedom, of unity, yes. of truth, yes. of humility. Yes. And yes. above yes. all yes. things, that religion will break loose. And the next thing you know, I mean, if you really believe <coughs> what prayer uh, will do, that Rama got saved and the whole thing has happened. You know? That's right. But yeah. if we pray saying, well, yeah, pray, but he's already too steep into it, he's older, and it's, uh, then it wouldn't happen. But if you really pray, with love that burns. Yes. Lord, save them, open up your eyes, break yeah. all these genuines yeah. out. Yes. Let them hear your voice. Yes. Okay, I'm going to close with this. We have a small team, we mentioned it before. In our family, we call it the Gideon's <coughs> Group. The person who birthed this mission years ago, uh, Fred Saki, who just inspired us beautifully, came to us last year and said, who's, who's praying for you? And we said, oh, there's thousands of people praying. We know some of them pray for us. He said, who's praying for you right now in this meeting? He said, we don't have a clue. It's not going to work. You have to have people praying for you. And we asked uh, one person, and that became 400 plus. And these people get a different set of emails. They're going to type them with one finger, and they are the most real. The other ones are beautiful and full of information. They're perfectly formatted. They're spell checked, and they go out once a week to thousands of people. They're translated to Spanish and to Chinese. There's stuff going on all over the world with that. The small group makes the same move forward. So if you write your name on the thing with your email and you put a star next to it, that means you want to go deep and you want to be in this intercessions group. And it's very beautiful. And it's been 
But the Lord has spoken to me when I started. I just wrote it to two friends. And I thought, well, I'm not going to pose. I'm going to be real. If they're already praying, I'm just going to write real. And then it grew and grew and grew. And then my parents got into that and they were not saved. My mom said, I'd like to know where you're going every day and what you're doing, you know. And I said, well, you know, I kind of write where we go every day, but it's all Jesus. I mean, it's kind of Jesus freak kind of letters. And she said, no, I'd like to be on that. So when she came on, I said, Oh Lord, do I change? I mean, I'm hurting, I'm sad. Does my mom need to know that? It will make her sad. I know I'm really all about salvation, and these people are Jews, and they don't see Jesus, and I'm writing about that. He's angry. And the Lord says, are you writing it because I'm writing through you, or am you writing it for to please people? I'm like, only you. <laughs> so, you know, that's how my father, I believe, got saved, because he's been reading this fire. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that the way things are, the spirit of religion say, once you got the crowd, you feed them so you don't yeah, lose the crowd, yeah, and you, right. you encourage them and you bring them out to focus on you so they want to stay with you because there are many right. like you, so you gotta keep moving fast. And I saw the names we talked about, so we can't entertain, we, we were entertainers before, we're not yeah. doing entertainment, and so not interested. And that's just, that excites me, so be real. So, you know, if we said, if you feel like a faith, if you feel. It's a dark day, we just write it. And yeah. people who've been reading it and pressing in, have been saying, that's so refreshing to be real. So this is real. Mm -hmm. And uh, praise God, I'm really praising God, I have had no, not been, we have not been attacked once in that circle. Mm -hmm. we, we pray, we pray to people that But in nobody ever said, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's just been, it's been fire. Now, what the Lord had showed me to tell you guys, is oh, that... just last week. That there is an alignment, and the alignment is turn east and focus on Israel. Yeah. You know, when the Jewish people get up in the morning, they pray the yes. Shema Israel and they look yes. east and they yes. remember Israel. I think, just my thought, not such the Lord, John 3.16 and then Matthew 23.39. If you want to have two weapons, John 3.16, alignment is who your God is. What did he do for you? The second one point, what, what do you need to do that he will come back? And you know what? The church knows that John 3, 16, and they do not know Matthew 23, 39. Mm -hmm. He says the Jews have to call upon his name. Yes. Yes. So I, I found this morning that our job is just to align you. Like let's go to the chiropractor and go yes. boom, boom. And if you have these two swords in your hand, and we're going to give you the people to pray, we just squeeze them in. And we are now in a place where the time is coming short because in October we land in Israel. So this every day is who we meet. Are you with us or not? Now it's not because Una and Leonardo. This is not about us. But are you getting on the speed train that you send your prayers, you do your war, this, this prayers will get Israel saved and when it's become a momentum, it won't stop. But we are now in a place where we're just putting the call, coin, call, in a, in a train and the train starts we start here in the engine, yeah. but to move it forward, <coughs> we need commitment. The spirit of unbelief would say, what's 140 people going to do in a country of 6 million? We believe that God has uh, handled the math there very beautifully. Mm -hmm. you, know, you will be praying for the entire nation, but the amount of focus you have is different when you're praying for real human beings and there's interaction. So we basically suggest, please let God do the math, but we know that these strongholds that have to come down over the nation have to be prayed down. So you're praying for individuals and you're praying for the tens of thousands of people who are under that strength. You know, oh yeah, what about the Holocaust? And if there's a you know, God, how can we allow these things to happen? And on and on and on and on and on. They're all, you, you, in real time, you're basically doing battle for the whole nation. We met one lady who's been with us from the beginning. We just came back to Nash. We said, how are you doing, Belen? She said, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm okay, but I'm exhausted. I said, why? She said, oh, I've been in a battle. Five years, but the last seven months have been so intense, and I'm just so tired. But it's great. So what have you been? So what do you mean? I've been praying. For everything you ask me to pray, I've been praying. That's the reality. I mean, yeah. that's the reality. Now I'm telling you because Elaine, I've been, she's been doing battle. Because if I rewrite my my sister, uh, <clears throat> is doing so well in her profession right now that it became her idol. Please break mm -hmm. her idol. And you look at that and say, yeah, I can pray that over Gali, but gosh, my, I, I, kind of, I have my own idols I have to pray first. Yeah. 
And you do the wall here. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. And then you go and do the wall with my sister. Yes. Yes. My sister wakes up and says, I don't know why I'm doing all of this. I'm like, yeah. Let me say this. The reason we yeah. gave that teaching was because we believe that the prayer team, you want to provoke, you want Romans 11, you want to provoke to jealousy. Yes. Remember it says, Gentiles, don't be hardy because you have this beautiful gift. Yes. It's because they were hardened yes. for this period of time, but when they get it, it will be like wine yes. from the dead. So they asked us in Israel, those who know us and love us and, and feel something very real uh -huh. here, they say, are all those people praying like you? Yes. And we get back to the States and we meet sometimes, and you hear like a half yes. an hour litany of, of defeat, and then you know, sometimes the answer is no. Yes. And sometimes the answer is yes. But yes. we realize, and someone told us years ago, the same guy who started this mission in inspiring us in evangelism, said the real mission is actually to the people on the prayer team. So that's actually the real mission. And we said, no, no, you don't understand. It was, it was like a hall of mirrors. Like, I don't get that. But for us to provoke to jealousy, people we'll never meet. God can deal with that as well. In other words, as we're growing in our faith, as we're walking in confidence in who he is, as we're pressing in and doing battle, as we're taking these generals and casting them out of our lives, you know, when you get off the plane and you come and visit Israel a year from now or whatever, and you call us up and we get together, you're going to have an overcoming testimony that someone who we've been ministering to for years, that might be the, that might be the, the piece that just gets into them. They say, wow, I really I need to move forward now. And no longer stay put. You know, that, and that happens. People meet them, and, and when people are coming to faith, or Mary's mom, she got hit by a car three months ago, right after she uh, was being transformed inside, and literally got laid up for three months, and we had, we asked the team to write it, and there were so many letters, and then after people are coming to faith, people are writing, and we have Gentile believers in America who are literally discipling on a weekly basis new believers in Israel, because the people in Israel are too busy building congregations to walk through life with spending hours like Joe spends with us. And we were so frustrated, then we realized, one new man? Why can't that be? Once you know that, yes, Jesus is a Jew, and you know that there's certain things that Jews are sensitive about, you don't want to just be sloppy with your use of language, once you get that stuff out of the way, which is easy, basically, one new man would look like that. It's no longer, hey, you know, no, uh, in the Messianic movement, this, this, uh, this propensity for like making rules and though you have to be Jewish in order to be in leadership mm -hmm. over here, you have to do this to do that. And where's one new man? Where is yes. that Jew and Gentile one and Messiah? Yes, and yes. we're actually seeing it birthed in this <laughs> seemingly <laughs> tragic need to find just, I mean, we know everybody in Israel. It seems like we know everybody who's busy doing all the stuff and it's great stuff. And you could take the, the reality and say, that's awesome, but it's really broken because they have to keep doing a song and dance so the people keep sending them support. You know, it's yes. a beautiful we were talking to the days, walk at the base of Nisan going, oh, do you think God sees it? God sees that these people get saved and nobody's there to disciple them? Do you think that God, how is God going to solve this issue? And we're coming back here and people start adapting the one who got saved and say, I want to I wanna disciple her, I want to write her email, I want to send her money, I want... And, and we see how God just brings it about. And there's, you know, today we have, you buy something from England, you just bought something from China, you just spoke to Italy. I mean, this is the world we live in, right? It's all here on that one iPhone and we have communication. So most of we can decipher from overseas as if it's FaceTime, right? I mean, <laughs> right, and we spend endless amounts of time with these new believers who are dear ones when we're there, but we did have to leave. And they're, in essence, they have hearts for evangelism themselves, and as brand new believers, not babies, but brand new believers, I think, if not mistaken, Peter was a baby believer. There was the day after, I mean, the, the Spirit had just come. He was totally ineffective, relatively speaking, in one moment, and completely changing the world, the next. You might call him a baby believer, but he had that zeal. Yes. And these new believers, because maybe because the DNA that's in our hearts, and they... You know what, Monica, the one woman who, we'll finish with this, Monica is Una's mom's best friend. She's in her 70s, and she came to faith, and it was, it was, she was the first one. It was just this year. And it was so incredible, and then we said, oh, don't spend too much time on the phone with Una's mom, she's going to try to talk out, and she said, don't worry, she's coming in. And she did. But Monica said, you don't understand something. No one who you've spoken to, it's impossible for them not to believe. They already believe. Mm. They just can't do anything about it yet. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I had the experience. It's like you know that you're hearing the truth. 
We came to Monica four years ago. She didn't tell us that then. She said, oh, are you missionaries? They shared the whole, oh, are oh, you missionaries? No, 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 we're just messengers. We came to give you the good news. And oh, came back the second year. Oh, the third year. Oh, the fourth year. She tells us that from the first time she heard, she already believed. Right, we left her house this year, it was in the summer, whatever it was, just a few months ago, and, and the next day we get a text, nothing happened, we had a good visit. Strong testimony from a friend of ours, who was cured from cancer and she was with us. And then the next day, we get a text. When you left the house, the presence of God came in. Mm -hmm. The power of God came in, and now I know that what you told me is the truth. I do to belong to Yeshua. That was the text, but you know what happened? Four o'clock in the morning, Yeshua came into the room and hugged her for three hours. That's what happened. And she said, Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people waiting for that hug. Yeah. So, anyway, that, I think that's, that's a good place to start. That's My a very hope, happy place to start. Yeah, we came and just, there was a bonfire here, but we just yeah. torched it to be. A yeah. big fire, and yeah. when we leave and say, Gosh, I can turn back, we can still see the fire, yes. and that you would carry these people in your heart, you would carry the two swords of the scripture, mm. and that dear Pastor Chuck, you know, the sky is the limit. You guys can meet once a month and take all these names and pray for them. Yeah. You can choose to disciple some of them, you can choose to come and use them. You, you can take it as far as you want, but I say, the foundation. Make space in yes. your heart to love them because without loving them, you can't get to see. You know, I have a sense that uh, I don't know if you know this, but Austin's pretty not on track when it comes to <laughs> Jewishness <laughs> compared to some places like Nashville or even Dallas, like that. Okay, but the one place that we had, I'm not going to say where it was, but this week they totally just dismissed us. They completely dismissed us. And I believe that you guys are forerunners. And this, this room, I'm not, I'm not saying this to be dramatic. I really believe that we have one uh, group of people in Memphis where it's the same kind of a thing, where we sense because it's small, it's intimate, it's real, it's, it's commitment, that uh, you can be creative. I, I would love it if when we came back, it would be gone for about 14 months. But if you got in the habit of using your printers, and when you get the materials, print them out right away and keep them out, and, and keep them in a fold. And we meet certain people like that, what do you mean, of course, I mean, how can I pray? You know, instead of just on your phone, or <coughs> your phone, people are putting some of these pictures and they're putting it on their screensavers. And things like that, what an incredible way to remember to pray. You know, individuals, it's an individual thing, but we say, why not get together once a month and say, you know, bring, bring a snack, and after the meeting, we're just gonna stick around and we're gonna pray corporately for the people we're praying for individually. I think there's a real blessing in it. You know, when my father got saved, he, uh, I wrote what happened, and the amount of people who responded in tears said, I'm jumping up now, I've been crying for the last half an hour, I, I've been feeling God's energy throwing in me and out, because we're all in it. It's yeah. not because we said something, it's because the prayers, and I told my dad, look, I opened it to the group, the Gideon group, people are going to send you welcome notes, because they were... That was the reason he got saved. The reason God called the names because they prayed. And my dad said, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I don't have time to write them all. Thank you, but absolutely, that's it. And he's been reading letter after letter. I gave the people his email. He said, God, I don't need to see what they write. I don't need to supervise it. And he's been getting emails. And he told me, yeah, it's like an ocean. Anytime I open a computer, it's an ocean. One man from uh, somewhere. He's Tennessee. Send him his picture, he's got the cutest uh -huh. stuff, teddy bear. He's a pastor of many years. It's, he has a lot behind him. He's a leader him. of leaders. He didn't use any of that. He said, Ellie, I just love you. I feel like I know you, and please know I am your friend. And my dad uh, called me and he said, who is this guy? Yes. He loves me. He yeah. says I am his friend. You know, it's these things that melt people's mm. heart to know that when we are real, yeah. kingdom is expanded. Okay, so in question, we're going to stop, but we need to know that how you received it, we usually we have a system, we hear something, we get in the car, so we're not about to get out of it. Oh, I got this system, what you get? So we need to know a little bit what you get so we know how we leave you. What you get? Oh, I'm, just, I'm just overwhelmed with joy right now. Um, uh, my mom, I'm Jewish, my mom's Jewish, and um, I'm just thinking about 
their, my mom and my grandpa and their salvation to come so hopefully prayer or good testimony. So I'm, I'm so inspired. Thank you. By the way, we, the same thing that we do, we ask people, so, hey, this is just a model. You're going to go speak to someone, get your five friends who you know really pray, and tell them a little bit about this person you're going to sit with, and tell them when you're going to go, and, and say, I'm counting on these prayers. I mean, it's not a, it's a perfectly appropriate thing to use. I'm mm -hmm. special, yeah. Oh, I think it's awesome. Like, uh, I was just talking, one of the regulars that comes into my job, goes back and forth to Israel a lot. Uh, he's he was born there originally. Uh, and trying to open up relationship and conversation with him is kind of difficult because he's a musician who travels around a lot. But I think it was awesome just cause to give you those tools to like know how to pray and know how to pray against certain things, especially like different strongholds and different enemies that we all have to fight, you know, and really knowing that those who are not under Christ or not under the blood of Christ don't have any escape from that mm -hmm. oppression. You know, they don't have any escape from being victim to that. And so, just a better way to pray and like mm -hmm. a stronger weapon. Special. The guy's Israeli. Who lives here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We'll talk later. Tamir. Is that me? Tamir. Tamir. I wouldn't play. Yeah, anyone who I don't like. Uh, I was just, I was just also wondering. You know, it's, it's very clear, but I was wondering, how, does it apply to? Uh, how do you apply it to other? you know, religions as well. I mean, because I would think that they, you know, how would you... Um, oh, in other words, how do you apply this to sharing with non-Jews? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, the same exact way. I mean, no, you know what? 90% so of the strongholds are not don't have Jewish distinctives attached to them. <laughs> you, you know, they're not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, the, the, uh, I'm not a sinner, so I don't need a savior. That was me. Most people mm -hmm. are not aware of and not ready to hate their own sin. But well, who would say that? What Geneva speaks to Leonardo when he says right. that? Right. Okay, so there's no difference, really, until you get to the history of the church and the Jewish people and those last few, that's the deluxe plan the enemy placed over the Jewish people for his own need to guarantee that they won't call out. But other than that, everything we've spoken about is 100% transposable to sharing the gospel with anyone who's lost. It's really not a Jewish thing per se, although our mission is to deal with these people who um, seem to be the least likely to succeed in terms of coming to faith. By the way, self-pity is pride. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. victimizes pride. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a great question. Do you think staying in the moment would um, just really help a lot too? I mean, because um, we were visiting uh, yesterday and talking about when I mean, it was mentioned when you, you know, there are certain things that bring you in that chain or you know or that cage, and it's the guilt or the you know the things that you feel bad about, and it keeps you there. But if you stay in the moment and you really think, you know, well. Love me, and you know, he was the way I am, and I don't have to feel guilty about, um, you know, any of this because our personal testimonies can't be denied. So, when you're dealing with someone who has not yet been introduced to the one who's standing at the door and knocking, if rather than talking about it, they actually get to meet him mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. your own witness, that's pretty much that's the only thing that we can bank on. Is there more teaching on this, like that? Yeah, I was going to suggest as long as when you write your name and you put the star, that puts you in the, uh, into the small group. I know, I know. But here's a good one. Have you put the star, if you put a circle around it, we're going to call Joe because we know he has notes and he's starting to share with, with smaller groups in national. You know what Joe says? It's incredible. Most believers don't want to know these things. Yeah. Now just put a star, that means you want to be on the Gideon's group, and put a circle around the star, and that will remind us to send you what we get from Joe, which we last him. Now, Mr. Gideon doesn't apply right now as much, but the concept is we're doing it together. So if you're going to open the email every three days, oh, don't sign right. to, it, to the Gideon group. I will say this, there's probably 40 or more pastors on that small group of 400, and some of them have, are hugely, hugely, hugely busy and unable to look at or deal with any kind of an email stream, and they all open and respond. It's a rich fair. It's a totally other thing. So, you know, because we say we're going to meet so and so, and we pray, we're on the stairways, please pray. We won't go in until enough birds stepped in. Right. So people receive it. It could be two o'clock in the morning somewhere where people have this clink, and they pray, 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 pray. 50 people pray, we knock on the door, we walk in. Yeah. Yeah. That's a small group. Awesome. Any questions? Yeah.
Yeah, Chuck, what is your impression? What's what your you takeaway? Yeah. Was yeah. it clear? I mean, you know, we, we don't, 99% of the time we don't do that teaching on the seven uh, generals wow. because it takes a lot of time and we could easily fill the time with the test more testimonies about the such and such. But I, I heard the Lord say that and I think that's because we want to um, walk forward with you guys and we think that it would be uh, yeah. useful. Well, we met last year in Pastor Glenn's house, yeah. remember? And mm -hmm. so I, I knew when we met last year that there was a board Amen. that was going to come attached to that because I just don't think God does those things Absolutely. randomly unless we decide to make it randomly. First so I knew, I knew a year ago that we would, we would you know, get into something a little bit deeper, a little bit more, but I didn't have the, uh, God I didn't have the language to it yet, but I knew it was going to come. So, um, you know, so I know that this doesn't. So I'm really, let me just say this, I'm really, uh, Honored to be a part of what yes. you guys are doing, and honored to be able to be part of one thing he spoke to me the other day, and I shared it with much people. People don't always understand that. Is there's always a place in the body? Like what's a, what's our place in the body? You know, mm -hmm. eyes, ears, whatever. Right. The, Lord told, the Lord told me the other day, He said, "You're in my arm, in the body." <laughs> and so I'm still getting a revelation of what all that means. But He told me that very clearly, mm -hmm. as clearly as I've ever heard anything from Him. Wow. And so I know that there's there's a lot to do. This is so intense because this morning I had a vision and I, I woke up with a picture of you, Mr. Chuck, with your right arm snapping the people out of their darkness, just snapping them out. And I thought, oh, if that that's this yeah, if this is what Chuck does. And that's what four hours of sleep. What you if the whole or everyone that is with you can do it together and they literally go snap up these people who are so miserable in Israel in jail, yeah. spiritual jail, and just bring them back to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. I've heard um, <coughs> and listened to the CD on the strongholds, it's, and uh, what you've done is nicely and beautifully to the Spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, clarified uh, the ability to really apply yes. uh, the, the strongholds how to, to d diminish them and how to re rebel, you know, to, to remove them from us. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I was here a year ago, and this room was filled with people. It was on a spirit of prophecy, mm -hmm. and it was a it was an interesting group of people. And it, and it was, and when I came in today, I thought, gee, the group is so small in comparison. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've got to say that everybody here, God called to be here. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's not one extra. There's not one less. That's right. Received the invitation to the banquet and you came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the strange ways that we showed up and the strange ways we came and the different things that called us. We didn't RSVP, that's okay, right? <laughs> 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 well, thank you guys. We, we will uh, put with a sign up sheet wherever <laughs> Pastor Chuck says he wants it to be on a counter somewhere if people can. Sure. Just remember, we have to read your handwriting. <laughs> right. Write the email, write it like a little, no, little right block of letters, because I have to get those into the computer. So again, star next to your name, and you're going to get a lot of emails. Small and groups. you can always say, I don't want that anymore, please release me, but say it kindly. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> circle the star if you want to get the written material from that. Uh, we went over from Joe Bradford today. And there's a... Uh, He's a, he's a beautiful man, and God placed him in, in our path. We will connect you with him. Yeah. There's a beautiful movie called Unconditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's his life story. It just came out, and, and so he's got a endless amounts of opportunity for his own pride to go up. And he says, he every time he gets, he gets all over the world. I get invitations, and he basically says the first thing he does is says, if you're excited about me. We, we got a lot of work to do. Because, you know, he really, he's in a, he's in the riding high moment right now. He's really broken and humble, man. We just love him. Because the first thing you do, you go and break the idol. Mm -hmm. And you know, you look at those who didn't break the idol, and you mm -hmm. go, yes. wow, how interesting. Yes. But science, science, day, if you go somewhere, and the move, the, there was a move of God, and you came out of there remembering the person who represents, right. and you don't remember what the Lord has done, That's and all right. glory come to the name, you go, but something else was operating there. That's right. He's got nine kids. He spent eight years in prison. Very, very strong uh, testimony. It's called The Walk of Love. His book is much more detailed. 
And they changed our lives when we read it that day when they put us together and we prayed. We took off from Memphis and he gave us the book. And that's the actual accounting of it. And he uh, had um, just a beautiful set of circumstances. And then when the Lord downloaded the stuff, it came out with a very, very deep end. I mean, each one of these things have, there's substances and things, visual, I mean, we don't want to get into it. There's a lot more. It's not necessary to know the lot more. But the, the heart of this thing is, is very useful. It's only meant uh, to equip. You know, if <coughs> I'm not mistaken, we already have at the cross all the finished work required. And the, how much more edification do we need? Really not much more. And, and, and in a way, we're kind of thrown off. and un, uh, We just don't grab a hold of the need to fill more. Give me more, give me more, give me more. We think... What spirit is that? Yeah. yeah, it's in the body. I mean, conference, 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 this, 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 this. What about those who are perishing? So we do believe that there's a balance in this. And that the, uh, what about the love? You know, how much edification is enough? How much is enough for me? Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of balance, rebalancing that comes with this thing. And that, you know, um, that heart for the lost, it's, it's the Lord's own heart. Yeah. Bless you guys. Thank you. Bless you guys. Would you guys do me a favor? Yeah. Would you pray really so we would be a blessing? But you will not receive anything if your temple is not ready to receive. Mm -hmm. So the first question, I know you sure often ask, do you believe it? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, we're not going to do an audible question, but do ask yourself if what you heard, if you believe it. Mm -hmm. And if not, ask the spirit of unbelief to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the biggest gift it sure tells us is to be thirsty and hungry. Mm -hmm. So we need to be thirsty and hungry to receive. And then we have to have the faith to receive it. So let's just close our eyes and get that in alignment and get, uh, kick every doubt and every negating thought and then we can pray that. Father, we just remember with all our Lord God that we uh, made this circle. We completed it. We include Sheila. She's... Uh, heart just uh, else when we see her we thank you for, for bringing us together here and bringing us to Austin and, and all that comes with that Father we just want to be a blessing to her as well and uh, Lord we uh, we know that you're not in any way sloppy with your divine appointments we know that you give us two families both our natural families which is no uh, no small thing and also our families uh, and you Lord God we just pray Lord that the uh, our loved ones, all of our loved ones, will benefit from today's meeting. Um, uh, that they will uh, have people praying for them. That they'll have our witness, their individual opportunities to uh, bring you to life. Father God, that you become so real to them like their own heart. And I just pray that this anointing uh, for uh, loving well and with your love, and to reaching into the darkest places and the truth and the light that chases the, the darkness away, Father God, that, that that's the outworking of this and not more, I got this cool teaching and stuff. So that practically speaking, you use all these materials in ways that we can't even begin to understand and that it will all come back to us and moment to moment by your Holy Spirit as we need to hear it again. And for those of us who want to study the scriptures and go into Joe's notes, I just thank you that there's a hunger and a thirst here for being well prepared and armed for the battle ahead. This is it. This is the one we've been waiting for, Lord God. The Jewish people, uh, along with the rest of the world, need to hear this message. But that which you came to first, the Jewish people, are going to be the ones to call you back. So that we keep our burdens for all the nations and all the individuals that we know in, in every place, Father God, that will add to that a deep and abiding commitment to uh, seeing the healing of this broken peace with the Jewish people, where they'll know their own Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah, as their personal Savior, Lord God, and that uh, everyone in this room will take part in that. Thank you.
And Lord, I want to claim that the spirit of every person here has heard everything they were supposed to hear and understood and own it. Yes. And I come against the spirit of unbelief that would say, well, you don't remember, you didn't really get it, you need more. So we say we are filled, the cups are filled of the spirit beyond and above. Yes. We are quick to step out and yes. be alert, yes. to see, to realize, to recognize. I say, Father, that we are complete, that this yes. chapter is behind us, oh, yes. moving us yes. forward. Yes. Each one in the spirit here oh, yes. owns this material. Yes. And yes. I ask, Father, that you would burn it with your fire, that yes. we'll be so yes. sensitized. Sensitized.